today, it's almost impossible to remember a time before fast food restaurants were situated on every corner of America's streets. But in the 1950s, there really weren't very many. And those that did exist only served one thing, hamburgers. So, when the chicken sandwich was made available by Chick-fil-A in 1961 to the masses, as quickly as a hamburger, the industry changed forever. Who created this ingenious sandwich? A lone soldier from Georgia whose life and creative ambition is a story you almost won't believe. Long before Chick-fil-A began, a young boy named S. Truett Cathy was born in rural Adenton, Georgia on March 14, 1921. He was born into a big Christian family with seven children who lived in downtown Atlanta throughout the Great Depression. During this time, life was hard for Truett and his family. He helped around the house as much as possible and learned to cook in the kitchen with his mother for their large family and boarders they took in to make money. Truett attended high school in Atlanta, but he also worked while he studied to help support his family. His many odd jobs included selling Coca-Cola and peanuts, as well as delivering newspapers. While he was making good money, the jobs took a toll on his studies, and after finishing school with mediocre grades, Truett was not able to attend university, not because of his lackluster grades, but because he was drafted into the U.S. Army to fight in the Second World War. As well as his time fighting in World War II, Truett's religious upbringing was extremely influential throughout his adult life. He was a member of the Baptist Church and taught Bible school and studies for 50 years. In fact, he was known as having a Bible on him at all times, saying it was his guidebook for life. And this dedication to his faith would also soon be applied to his business ethics and the way he ran his stores. After he was honorably discharged from duty, Truett had no clear career path laid out in front of him. Without knowing that he would succeed, young Truett decided to open a small restaurant with his brother. The first restaurant Truett opened with his brother Ben was called The Dwarf Grill, located in Hapeville, Georgia. In order to have enough money to open the business, Truett sold his car and took out a loan. The brothers worked hard because it was a 24-hour diner as was popular at the time, they each worked 12 hours a day, only taking Sundays off to go to church. And while the business was going well, tragedy struck that made success feel insignificant. Ben and one of their other brothers passed away in a plane crash. Truett continued to push through on his own at the Dwarf Grill. He felt he needed to be able to provide for Ben's widow and their daughter, so he got to work. And to fill the hole that Ben had left, Truett's wife Jeanette worked alongside him. Together, they created a family atmosphere at the Dwarf Grill, and the restaurant began to conduct consistent business. One of the main reasons for their success was because the restaurant was located directly next to the Ford Motor Company plant, meaning hundreds of hungry men were right next door every day. They did so well that they actually opened up a second diner in a nearby town. However, the second location burnt down shortly after opening. And as the insurance wasn't enough to open again, as it was, Truett decided it was time to make a real change. And when the second location burnt down, Truett decided to change his tactics and created a serve-yourself buffet as opposed to offering table service. His customers were disappointed to say the least, and after three months of less than impressive sales, he decided to take a break from the industry. The original Dwarf Grill still stood and was running successfully. At the time, they mostly sold hamburgers, but everything changed when poultry salesmen Jim and Hall Good paid Truett a visit. They had made skinless and boneless chicken breasts for Delta Airlines, who refused to purchase their product as it would not fit into the airline trays. And when Truett saw the breasts, he remembered cooking delicious fried chicken with his mother when he was a child. So he thought to himself, what if he could make his mom's famous fried chicken recipe better and faster so that it could be served quickly? He got to work testing recipes, and a few years later, he finally figured it out. The chicken breasts were marinated, just as his mother had done, and then breaded and fried in a pressure cooker for speed. He then placed the chicken into a buttered bun with pickles to serve it as a sandwich. 
S. Truett Cathy called his creation Chick-fil-A, as it was a sandwich filled with grade A chicken. And although Americans were hesitant to eat their chicken on a sandwich, as soon as they tried one, they were hooked. The Chick-fil-A sandwiches were outselling hamburgers at the Dwarf Grill, and Truett knew he had created something seriously special. Before opening more restaurants, Kathy began selling the rights to his recipe in exchange for royalty payouts. The Houston Astrodome and 50 other local restaurants bought the recipe, and although it meant the sandwich was becoming financially successful, Truett was unhappy with this situation. The kitchens recreating his Chick-fil-A chicken sandwiches were not following his exact instructions, and quality started to fade. Truett's sister Gladys presented an idea. He should open a Chick-fil-A restaurant in the local shopping mall where she worked. The space was small, but it was perfect for starting a new business. However, the owners of the mall were unsure about the idea as restaurants were not common in shopping centers at the time. But it should come as no surprise by now that Truett was not a quitter and convinced them to lease him the space, promising that it was exactly what their mall needed. In 1967, the first Chick-fil-A opened and was immediately successful. In fact, they started making a profit after only one week. And of course, Truett revoked the rights of the other restaurants to sell his recipe, as he wanted the Chick-fil-A name to not only be synonymous with quality, but also be his and his alone. Over the next two decades, S. Truett Cathy used his profits to open dozens of Chick-fil-A restaurants, but only in other shopping centers. Renting space was considered a safer bet, as there was consistent foot traffic, and of course, if the building burnt down, he wouldn't be responsible for rebuilding. Things were good for Truett and Chick-fil-A. However, as Truett was an entrepreneur at heart, he decided in the early 1980s that he was ready to once again take the risk of buying buildings and opening standalone restaurants. So, the first freestanding Chick-fil-A location was opened on April 16, 1986, in Atlanta. And while he continued to be cautious and ensure he didn't end up in debt, sales were substantial enough that he could continue opening restaurants around the state. While the chicken sandwich was beloved by all, it wasn't just the food that made the restaurant so popular. Truett knew from his past experience attempting to open a buffet restaurant that people appreciated good service. So even though his restaurants were technically fast food joints, he ensured that his employees gave the best possible service to their customers. Along with exceptional service with a smile, he also knew that the best way to do something right was to give it your full attention. Therefore, the restaurants only sold perfect chicken sandwiches and a few sides instead of a variety of not so well made menu items. During the 80s, 90s and even into the new millennium, fast food chains began to appear everywhere, but no one was doing what Chick-fil-A was doing. They had hamburgers, sub sandwiches, or large menus with lots of options. Chick-fil-A served only the best chicken sandwiches in the world, and they did extremely well with this model. In addition to these tactics, Chick-fil-A also continues only to serve grade A chicken. They promise that their chicken is antibiotic free and all of their food is completely trans fat free. As you may remember, Truett was a devout Baptist and Chick-fil-A's business model was also based on his faith. In fact, the mission statement clearly states they are to glorify God by being a faithful steward of all that is entrusted to us, to have a positive influence on all who come in contact with Chick-fil-A. The business has become a franchise model and while it's not technically expensive, to open your own Chick-fil-A, there is a rigorous application that requires a character assessment to ensure you will follow the company's ethos, in addition to being a dedicated business owner. Over the years, Chick-fil-A has received some backlash for its refusal to open for business on Sundays and its clear connection to the Christian faith, as many people argue that corporations should be non-denominational. But Truett is quoted as saying, I was not so committed to financial success that I was willing to abandon my principles and priorities. One of the most visible examples of this is our decision to close on Sunday. Our decision to close on Sunday was our way of honoring God and of directing our attention to things that mattered more than our business. However, the company has clearly stated that the Chick-fil-A culture and service tradition of our restaurants is to treat every person with honor, dignity, and respect, regardless of their belief, race, creed, sexual orientation, or gender.
Financially, Chick-fil-A is one of the most successful fast food chains in the country. And even though many other chains, such as Popeyes and McDonald's, serve their own version of a chicken sandwich, many agree that there is none that compares to the original Chick-fil-A recipe. There are almost 3,000 locations throughout the United States, as well as in Canada, the United Kingdom, South Africa, and Puerto Rico. The business makes over $12 million in revenue every year, and although the incredible creator of the company, S. Truett Cathy, passed away in 1993, it is still owned by the Cathy family, who is worth an incredible $14 billion. Although many argue that S. Truett Cathy, the young soldier from Georgia, did not actually invent the chicken sandwich, there is no doubt that he created the first fast service chicken sandwich and, with brilliant know-how and dedication, made it one of the most popular fast food options on the market today. And, of course, made his family billionaires. Hungry for another fascinating business story? Click on the following video to hear the crazy story about the poor son of a carpenter who invented Maybach.